I'm building a new cockpit, even better than this one, starting from today. You might think that I have gone completely insane if I'm replacing this actually quite nice cockpit, but I actually have built a cockpit inside my home, so you do the math. There are a few reasons. One is that I just enjoy building this stuff for myself as a hobby, as almost as much as playing stuff with it. And I just have some ideas that I want to do and I want to make a better one. And the second reason is that so many of you have actually commented that you would have liked to see me building this one. So I thought that it would also make an interesting series for my channel. I'm not rushing this build. It might take the rest of this year, but I want to make it a good one. And I'm going to make videos out of it when I have something to show. I would expect something like 10 episodes. I have this 3D model that I made and my goal here is basically take everything that works from this cockpit, like the dimensions, and then improve some aspects that I don't like, like the use of space. Also, I'm going to upload this 3D model somewhere later this year, so anyone can actually download the model and create the cockpit for themselves if they want to. There are also a few aspects that I still need to figure out as I go, like improving the display stand, I want to get rid of those wires, and I need to figure out what, I, what I'm going to do with the left, left side with the left joystick and throttle so I can switch between hotas and hoses quickly. Also, I don't think I'm going to keep this particular throttle forever, so I need to make sure that it would support perhaps the Rebel CM3, but I'm also considering a few other options. I need to figure out how I'm going to make these things work. But I'm going to publish new episodes whenever I have built something interesting and I have time to edit the episode. Let's get started with the build. And if you're wondering about the baseball cap, I'm over, over 190 centimeters tall and this basement is really low, so I get dangling my hair all the time to the ceiling. What I have here is four sheets of 21 millimeter plywood. I guess that would be something like seven eighths of an inch. And also, if you want me to do these imperial conversions, let me know in the comments. It would be quite difficult for me to do them on the fly, but I could do them on the post-processing. The 21 millimeter plywood might be, might be a bit overkill for the project, but at least it's going to, going to be sturdy. This is just cheap pine plywood, not that high quality, but any kind of cabinet quality plywood would have basically doubled the price of this build. This is what I'm going with, and in any case, I want to get rid of this wood texture here, so there will be a lot of sanding, painting, and processing to do. Since everyone's always asking how much, how much did it cost, this time I'm actually going to track the costs throughout the build. I'm expecting something like five to 600 euros for the total cost, but that might actually rise, and I hope getting part of that back back from selling my old cockpit. So I'm going to keep track of the costs and going to keep you updated. So far it's something like 300 euros and most of that was natural to plywood, then a few fasteners and stuff like that. And when I'm finished with the series, the last video will be a detailed cost breakdown and also the lessons learned. So, so let's get started with this build. This station is something that I built on top of old cabinets that we had lying around. And as everything in this basement, it's not pretty, but it usually gets the job done. Today I'm building just a base plate. This is actually just quite quite easy part, but it's also a great way for me to get familiar, familiar with filming this stuff. And I'm making small adjustment to my previous setup here, and I'm making it from two parts. And I'm going to show you when I have everything ready, that what, how it works and why I did the adjustments. Also, it's a good, th good thing to notice that I'm not an experienced woodworker, but I have done some stuff. Last bigger project was a greenhouse from, from my wife from windows that she found for free that would have been thrown away. So I have done some stuff and I do realize that part of you might, have, might be even less ex experienced than I am. So I try to tell that what I'm doing and what I'm doing he here as I'm building so it might be useful for for some people if you're one day planning to build a cock cockpit like this one or something completely different. I have two by twos for the front section of this base plate and two by fours for the rear section that's going to be on, under the chair. Just kind of word of warning before we start start to do anything. And if you're not familiar with these tools that I'm working but planning to use them at some point, make sure that you check the safety safety stuff before you start using them because if it cuts wood it will cut your flesh and most likely your bone. Okay, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to mark the exact place where I want to cut it and then use that one piece 
as a template for the rest of the pieces that I'm going to need. And just to get accurate markings, I prefer using 0.5 mechanical pencil, pencil when I'm working inside. Also, there will be a lot of dust in the air when I'm cutting this stuff, and my dust extraction systems are pretty horrific, so I'm just using something like this. No, it's oh, sorry, lost it there for a second. Let's talk about joiner here a bit, meaning how to add a species of wood together. It will be a really important topic, especially when we start working with the plywood, since it will be essentially cabinet making that we're doing there. A different joiner techniques range from simple butt joint, where you might glue this thing together or drill hip few nails or perhaps screws here, to complicated Japanese joinery that where you where you can create really strong joints even without any fasteners or glues. My principle here is that I want to make good enough joints. Not overly complicated, that would take a lot of time, but still something that will last. You might have seen some YouTube makers using stuff like dominoes or biscuits when they're creating cabinets. I don't have closets full of fancy festival stuff here, so I'll need to use something a bit more simple when I'm working with this stuff. So the first part I need to put together is the lower part of the base plate. This is quite simple, since it will be lying on the floor, there won't be any pressure on the joints, so I can just use the simple butt joints where I'm going to drill in holes here and add, add some screws. That's enough for that, that purpose. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first measure the exit positions for the holes just so it would look clean, drill the holes or pre-drill the holes for the screws and then add in the screws. I think one thing worth mentioning, you see me using these things a lot. This is something that I think it's made for drywall cutting and that's what I've used a lot. A simple tape measure would probably be enough for most of the cases, but I just want to make sure this at least is really accurate. And then the calculator. I want to make sure that I will get all the measurements correct, so I would most likely double check even one plus one with this thing. Next I'm going to assemble the part that will be under the chair, and there will be small challenges, because the way I'm going to make it is that the there will be casters underneath the side beams, but the most of the weight of the chair will be basically held by these other beams here. Basic butt joint might not be good enough in this case, but I think that something like half lap joint would be appropriate here. So it just means cutting half of away from here, here and half away from here, so they will be like this. And then the side beams will actually support the back and back and forth beams here. You could cut the half lap joint with even with the hand saw if you're good enough with it. I'm not, so I'm just going to use my miter saw here. So again, I'm going to start by marking the places that I want to get get rid of, and then using the miter saw, I'm just going to cut the grooves in the right places, make sure they're sanded, sanded flush, and then attach everything together. In this case, I'm going to use wood glue to make really strong joints, but I'm also adding a single screw there just to keep everything together until the glue has dried. I'm going to find the center point, point of this 2x4 just by measuring the half of the distance and then mark it in from two directions just to make sure that it is actually the center point here. Now I'm just going to lock the plate to the right height here and just a precaution when I'm taking my fingers next to the plate I took, took the plug out, so... And when everything is in the right place, I'm just going to start chopping the wood off first by taking, making a really accurate cut and then consequent cuts so I have the cut that I'm going to need here. After some really careful cleaning and especially airing of the workshop, it's time to continue. I have dry fitted everything in place and it's not perfect, but it's good enough. Next step I'm going to do is I'm going to apply some glue here and also drill in few screws just to keep it in place until everything has dried out so I can continue working it with it right away. This is actually one tip that I pick up from YouTube. This silicone kitchen thing is is actually a great way to apply glue since you can tear off the extra glue when, when it has dried quite easily. 
So what I'm going to do here is taking this apart and then start, start reassembling it. So what I'm doing here, I'm just applying plenty of glue to all the joints, making sure they are squared and then drilling, drilling in the, or screwing in the screw to keep it in place. That ended up being quite accurate and if you're wondering about the placement, placement of the supports here, this is exactly where the tear is going to be attached so the screws go right into this one. Also I think I'm going to add one extra support here just so when I'm drilling the holes for the chair there, there will be wood underneath those holes. Next it's time to start cutting the sheets. Uh, I'm not going to use the plywood yet. For the for the chair, the chair is really resting on the supports so there's not that much that much pressure on the sheets and for the lower part I'm still entertaining the idea that I actually would buy something like textured aluminium plates. I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do, but that's a decision I can do it later and if I feel that I, it needs some extra support I can just add some other sheet on top of that. So I'm going to use this cheap wood sheet that I actually built my previous co cockpit from this extra stuff and I'm going to save the plywood when I actually need it. Again, many ways to cut this. My table saw it's some some Bosch consumer grade stuff, it's not really good for cutting anything larger and the fence is just horrif horrific so it takes ages to get it, get it right angle so that won't be an option, option for me. Last cock cockpit was mostly built with this one. You just need to have a straight edge and take into account the difference between this edge here and the blade. And I know I might have mentioned something about the Festol stuff but I promise this is my only one. So a while ago I got a great deal for a second hand track saw and I just couldn't resist buying one. This will just make working with the sheet good so much much nicer. Okay so I'm going to start by marking exactly where I want to cut from. Then after I have done that I'm just adding the track to the right place and cut uh, right side sized piece and when I'm done with that one I'm going to cut those pieces smaller so I can attach them to the to the frame. I most likely I would use my nail gun but at the moment it's actually broken so I'm just going to drill in a few holes for the screws and then add just some basic basic small screws here to keep it in place. First thing first thing I'm going to do here is measure the positions for the screws it's not something you have to do here, but just having to every, everything aligned it makes it makes it look a bit nicer. Then just drilling the pilot holes for the screws, counter boring them, and attaching the screws. One last thing, adding casters. This is actually something I'm going to make differently than my current cockpit. It has this really handy way of getting in, is that I'm opening the side panel, and it, it's great. But I'm, I want to photoproof this setup and I'm still, still dreaming of building the 270 degree screen around it one day. But not now. But I'm not sure if it would work well with opening side panels. So in this case I'm just adding casters under here where the table is going to go. And that's, that's how I'm just going to make sure that it, it will be photoproof for all the setups. These are actually handy. I can hide these ones quite easily inside, making, making it a bit cleaner and then just attaching everything. Well, that's it for the first episode. I'm going to figure out the locking mechanism and everything later when I have painted everything and I don't have to take them off again. If you're interested in following, following the progress, don't forget to subscribe. For the next episode, I'm going to start working with the front panels. Thanks for watching and goodbye.